Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests to have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so I have Pamela Moore on the line, and she's president and CEO over at Detroit Public Schools Foundation. Pamela, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you, Adam. So nice to be with you. All right, so uh, I'm so excited to have you on the show today. We're going to talk about Detroit Public Schools Foundation and the work that you're doing. Uh, And for those that have been following the show for a long time, so I'm from Detroit, and I'm a product of Detroit Public Schools, Um, big fan. And uh, and as Pamela and I were warming up, I'm like, man, we have all these connections. I'm like, went to Cass Tech, Wayne State University. I'm like, I went to your middle school. You may not even have known that that Wayne State had a middle school. This was back in the day. So. Um, So. Excited to have you on here, Pamela. Maybe just to um, just to get us kicked off and to get us started, uh, let's go a little bit more into the foundation. So just tell us a little bit more about, about the foundation and what you do, please. So, so thank you, Adam, for having me today. Just a real pleasure. Uh, so I joined the foundation four years ago, and I am a product of the district. Um, and we were really created by the district, by Detroit Public Schools Community District, which is the current name, to um, to assist in fundraising, mm-hmm. to find those resources to fill in those gaps. And as you well know, there are many, many gaps these days. So our mission is to create and enhance educational opportunities for not only our students, but our families and our educators. And so we have a service agreement with the district, um, which is reviewed annually and negotiated annually. And really our main purpose is to fundraise. That's traditional fundraising through campaigns and signature events, as well as serve as fiduciary over some pretty major program grants that have come into the district over the past three years. You know that the district um, was taken over by the state for many years. The deficit grew, just a real mess. And it was handed back to the citizens of the city of Detroit in 2016. They elected the school board. The school board hired a phenomenal superintendent, Dr. Nikolai Vitti, in 2017, and he has been moving the needle ever since. And so that is what we do. It's a real privilege to have this position, and um, we're just doing the really hard work and really important work right now. So, uh, you know, obviously the the entire world being affected of what we're going through, you know, COVID-19. And as we're recording this, just for everybody that's listening, so, so, you know, when they're listening to this years in advance, they know what's going on. So we're recording this in December of 2020, um, going to the new year. And uh, where I'm at in in, uh, in L.A., restaurants, nobody's still, a, just for context, we're still not allowed to go into restaurants. They're closed, even indoor and outdoor um, dining's closed. So we're still in the middle of this mess. So. How is this really, you know, impacting, you know, the public schools in Detroit and the system overall? Like, what are some of the things that are going on? Well, we are in the same position. We can dine outdoor, but, you know, our weather is not even nice. And so, oh, yeah. uh, we, you know, we were a hot spot early on in March, mm. and uh, we closed our schools in March. Uh, we had summer school, though. We had really stringent protocols in place regarding COVID. We had very few cases. We just did an excellent job. Um, And then the fall came. We offered three options, face-to-face learning. We offered um, virtual learning from home. 
and we offered, if you're a parent that couldn't really handle that, that home learning, you could send your child to the school into what we call the learning center. They could be fed breakfast, they could be fed lunch, which of course food insecurity is a huge, huge focus for us. Um, and so we had those three options, trying to meet parents where they were and, and, and trying to address all of their needs. Fast forward, November comes, the cases started to go up in Detroit and the surrounding communities, and we closed the schools a couple of weeks ago. And so now we're completely virtual. And I can tell you, you know, when we heard about COVID and we knew that inevitably schools were going to close, this was early February, we started having conversations about our families and our children and knowing that they did not have the equipment or internet or the knowledge and the skills, many of them, not all, to mm -hmm. to learn virtually. And I can tell you, the philanthropic community in Detroit, as you probably well know, came together, uh, sat down with our superintendent and went to work. DTE Energy uh, mm -hmm. and the president's CEO, Jerry Norcia, said, I'll take the lead. And in April, we had a call with 100 philanthropic organizations who just answered the call. We raised along with many, many partners, we raised $23 million and purchased 51,000 tablets for every student, free internet and a one year of technical support. We, we put our teachers into training. Um, we just did everything right and we did it early. And so by summer, those tablets were coming in. Now we did have three or four you know, months of, 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 of learning loss, I'm sure, for some of our students that didn't have the equipment needed. But by summer, everyone had, had picked up their tablet. And so by fall, all of our students had the equipment needed. And that was just a huge, huge accomplishment and a heavy lift, let me tell you. Um, as foundations and corporations, you know, they have many priorities, but people pivoted, people shifted those priorities and found dollars and helped us um, ensure that our children have the resources that they needed to continue learning. But I can tell you this COVID has just, it's been, you know, we were really on this road to recovery. You know, the district had outdated curriculum, the teachers' salaries had been cut, uh, our facilities are old and, and, and need maintenance. I mean, you name it, it was an issue. Um, and we had started to, you know, music and sports and, and, and arts had been eliminated in most of our schools. So mm. we were on the road to restoring some of those things that have, had, had not been invested in. And, and then COVID hit. And so, you know, we had 3,000 children that we couldn't find in the fall. We went knocking on doors to try to find those children. We did find about a 1,000 of them. I mean, children have disappeared, you know, for various reasons, and the poverty in Detroit. You know, I don't know what the national narrative is about Detroit, but I've been here all my life, and Detroit is not back. The, 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 the Detroiters, the majority of Detroiters, are, are struggling. The, it, there, there is a large population of Detroiters that uh, don't have their basic needs met every day. And you add COVID, on, and that was pre-COVID, and you add COVID on top of that, there's some real concerns about food insecurity and about housing insecurity and about just basic needs that, 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 that our families are just struggling with every day. And so I just I'm fearful that the that the uh, progress that we've made over the last three years, oh, we're going to see, you know, we're going to see the effects of COVID, and I don't think it's going to be good news. And so that's that's what keeps me awake at night. You know, what are we doing? Can we do more? How can we support our families? Are our children really going to be prepared to graduate? And will they graduate on time? Will they be held back once those standardized standardized tests? To get back into place after COVID goes away. Um, and then, and then, you know, Detroit is booming. Economic development is booming. There are a lot of good things happening, but will our children be able to, uh, be part of that revitalization that's happening here? And I'm sad to say right now, a lot of our children are still being left behind, but it's not because the, the leadership currently at Detroit Public Schools Community District, they are working morning. I have watched them over the last nine months, and they have worked morning, noon, and night to make sure that these children and these families are okay, and we are alongside them trying to find those resources. And so we need partners. We need resources. We need grants. We need so much. Um, I hope to 
launch a campaign next year for our alums. You know, I graduated with a thousand other students at Cass Tech. So just do the numbers and the number of alums that are out there um, who could partner with the DPS Foundation and help us with this work and help us make sure that our children have the resources and tools that they need to be successful in college and career. So that's what I hope to do in 2021. I'm not going to let COVID stop me, Adam. <laughs> oh, I know you're not, Pamela, and, I, and it makes me feel good that you are out there doing this work. Um, one of the things, one of the things that you mentioned that I just want to talk a little bit more about, and I think it's just important for our audience and for people to consider is like when, so when I think about Detroit overall, like you said, it's booming. Like there's a lot of business, a lot, a lot of good things happening. But you know, when we think about not just because it's the right thing to do, but when you think about like the future workforce and the people that live there, yeah. you know, daily and, and the, the future consumers and like the people that the proprietors, right? Like, like how, exactly. like how we make sure that the children benefit from all the good things that are going on. Can you talk a little bit more about that? I can. I'd love to talk about that. In my prior life, I uh, was president and CEO of the public workforce agency. And so I felt like I was on the back end of the work. We were helping adults get the proper training. We were looking at the industries that were in demand and the industries that were growing in Detroit. And how do we keep our children here? Or after they uh, finish college, how do we bring them back? Um, and how do we prepare them for these growth industries and these these new jobs that, that have uh, really, you know, Detroit has changed so much in the last five years, five to 10 years. And so now I'm on the front end. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at that pipeline. I'm looking at our children and how prepared are they when they walk out the door in the 12th grade. And we've got a lot of work to do because now the hot industries in Detroit are IT and healthcare and, and construction and construction. And we have, uh, thanks to many of our wonderful partners, there's been a huge investment back in our vocational schools because when I was in workforce development and we were building all kinds of uh, uh, stadiums and athletic arenas, we couldn't find enough Detroiters to put into those construction jobs. They struggled with passing the apprenticeship exams. They struggled with the math um, that was required. And so we are laser focused on being sure that we have uh, state-of-the-art facilities, Randolph Vocational School, Brighthoff Vocational Center. We have these vocational schools that will train our young people to work with their hands, to go into the skilled trades, because those are jobs that that are growing and that are available here in the city. And so you see a lot of people moving into the city. Our real estate market is booming. You know, the prices have gone up. And so you know, it's all about helping the least of these. It's all about having public education that helps you um, remove yourself from poverty to, to bet you so that your children are better off. And so we have to make school, sure that these public school districts across the country, especially in urban areas, are funded properly. We have a large special needs population. We can't turn any children away. We need resources. We need funding. We need that calculation that comes from Lansing to be revisited. It's just $8,000 per pupil is not enough, especially when the suburbs are spending about 15000 per pupil. And so, you know, there's so many layers to this, Adam, but we are doing a better job, I think, of preparing our young people. Um, again, we've got great partnerships with the Mayor's Workforce Development Board um, helping us prepare We've got an Office of Career and College Readiness. Um, they are focused on these career academies across our high schools. So we have these pathways. So if you want to go into medicine, you really need to, you know how spread out Detroit is, Adam. Mm -hmm. We're 139 square miles. So you really don't go to the school in your neighborhood like we used to. So if you're interested in medicine, you need to go to Cody High School if you're interested. So we have these pathways laid out in every high school so that families and students can be in a high school that exposes them and, and readies them for the career that they're thinking about going into. So internships and career days and, and, and paid, you know, summer employment. We try to tie that in to where the interest lies. So once again, our children can be prepared once they walk out that door, whether they want to go right into a job or whether they want to go to college. We have scholarships. We raise money for scholarships every year. We have some promise scholarships 
currently um, that are funded through the city that pay for your community college, pay for your your associate's degree. So there's really, you know, I, I want to say there's no excuse, but, you know, there, there are lots of reasons, unfortunately, and obstacles and barriers that stop our children from excelling and stop our children from getting these resources that they, oh, that they so deserve. Um, and so it's, it's a, you know, we've all got to row in the same direction. We've all got to get on the same page and we all um, have to put these, leverage these resources, public and private dollars, um, to get these children what they need. Because otherwise, guess what? Crime rates are not going to change. Unemployment rates are not going to change. It's all related. It's all, our neighborhoods are still going to be blighted. It's all related. And so, um, you know, I'm hoping that the next administration um, puts more of a focus on public education. I think they will. Um, and, again, it starts from the top, but it certainly starts at the community level as well. And Detroit is just – I am so proud of the work that we've done this year to – address the COVID challenges, and to get these children the resources that they need and to address the basic needs that our families uh, are struggling with. I am proud to be from this community right now, and I've always been proud, but the work that we've done has really, really, really been impactful. Wow, you took me through uh, down down memory lane, Pamela. I'm sitting here thinking to myself, when you think about these programs, so I remember at Cast Tech, I was in the business, on the business track, and I remember my first early internship that affected a large portion of my life up to this point. So I was, um, I went to school a couple hours a day, then I worked at the local at a brokerage firm over in downtown called it was it was Raymond James and Associates at that time. Um, I don't know if that office is still there over at One Griswold. So I remember going there every. Single Single day, and I would when I worked there every single day, and uh, and that led to a career of almost 14 years in finance. So then that's what led me originally to California. I've been full time now in media um, for going on five years. So I, I don't do that profession anymore. But that like if I if I really look back, it all started with me being exposed to the financial markets based off of that internship, um, and that the that CAS allowed me to do and and exposed me to money. Con- Concepts, and then I started managing managing money, went to college, of course, and all that other good stuff um, based on a lot of those things and just having that exposure. Had I not had that exposure or had I not, you know, had those opportunities that, you know, that it's so important that we make sure this next generation and the kids right now that are in schools get, um, you know, things can end, out, end up much differently um, and, and for many if they don't have those types of things. So I can't, I mean, you hearing you say that, I mean, you just now, you just laid out my whole life, Pamela. I'm like, this is That's great. It. So and we want to make sure the next generation has it too is the point. It, and they deserve it because we had it. I was a business major at CAS. I got to work while I was in high school. I got exposed to all the all the different opportunities and, and, mm-hmm. and figured out what I was good at and what I was interested in. And that's exactly what it's about. And so you're, you're absolutely, and I know, I remember Raymond James, it's not there anymore, but you're mm-hmm. right. Our children need to be thinking about these things in high school and being exposed in high school. We got to put them on a bus and take them somewhere where they've never been and expose them to all these new companies. Dan Gilbert has Oh, my goodness. Dan Gilbert has brought so much to the city of Detroit in terms of new businesses and opportunities and incubators and and, and new companies. And our children need to be exposed and need to do internships there. And he's been a great partner as well. And oh, so, I love, right. love Dan Absolutely Gilbert. Right. That, that, was, that was my first boss out of college. I remember oh, wow. sitting in training class at Quicken. Uh, what well, was Rock Financial back then? Right. Um, and and uh, I remember sitting outside of my class, um, uh, or excuse me, in the first training class out of college after graduated, and hearing Dan Gilbert talk and putting his phone number on the board. And I wrote about it in one wow. of my books. And I wrote, yeah, I wrote a whole thing on Dan Gilbert in one of my books, and, and wrote it on the board. And he says, if anything's wrong, you give us a call. And, I, and he was already super successful at this time. And I'm like, did he just? What a servant leader! Like, did he just put his like? We're a new hire class. We're just starting. Like we're babies, and I'm like, did, did the owner of the company just put his cell phone number on that board and say if there's anything like if it's not what was it? One of his isms. It's not who's right, but what's right. I still remember that. How many years later? Um, no, That's Dan right. Gilbert's amazing individual. So I love and, it. Um, and, and and we actually have have uh, a representative on our board, and so we've got a 
got a really high-powered, high-profile board now, and just mm. so many opportunities ahead of us. But you're right. I want Detroit Public Schools Community District to prepare these children like Detroit Public Schools prepared Pam and Adam, right? Mm -hmm. And because the world is, you know, I I felt like there was nothing I couldn't do when I graduated from Cass Tech. And so I want these children to have the same thing. They deserve it. That's amazing. So, Pamela, that being said, um, I could talk to you all day long about this, (laughs) but uh, we're we're about out of time on this episode. So that being said, um, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about Detroit Public Schools Foundation or to connect with you and your team, I mean, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, I would say come to our website, which is kind of under construction, but it's the best way to find out about us. We've got our annual report out there, DPS for Detroit Public Schools, FDN, FrankDeniseNancy.org, DPSFDN. Just look us up, Facebook, Instagram, look us up, Detroit Public Schools Foundation. We're out there. Uh, We've got just some exciting things going on, but just come and visit. Um, Take a look at our annual report and really digest all the wonderful things that we have going on and be a partner. More than anything, reach out. Please call me, Pamela Moore. more at dpsfdn.org and be a partner you know help us in this journey to uh, find the resources that we need for these children they deserve it um, and 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 some things are just not so easy anymore and so help us be a partner get on board get on the train with us help us do this really important work Awesome. Well, Pamela, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your work and uh, what's going on in our Detroit public schools. So great stuff there. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, especially if you're a first-time listener, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. Have some more great guests coming up. Definitely would love to uh, love to have you be a return listener. Um, and, don't, and if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, definitely give that a subscribe, but also leave us some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and what's going on in your world. And Pamela, thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you, Adam. Have a great day.